Hello and welcome back to the Perth to Paisley podcast, episode number 136. And what a week it has been since we last spoke to you. Hearts have played twice, they've won twice, they've scored seven, only conceded one, got through in two cup competitions. It's very much foreign territory. But we're going to cover all of it as normal. I am one of your hosts, Daniel McIver, joined as ever by Adam Kennedy. Adam, how are you doing? Uh, an extremely happy Adam Kennedy. Yeah. Yes, as you as you've alluded to, McIver, what a, a wonderful week it is to be a Jambo. Hartman Lowly Football Club for in everybody's good books. Um, th- 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 this is kind of I don't want to piss on everybody's parade instantly, but I'm gonna. Oh, like, God, we seem to start off thing. seasons. We're we're starting seasons nicely quite a bit now. I know, and well. then we'll hit that mid-season lull. So that's that's a long way away. We'll Let's just October. focus on the here and now. And February seem to be the month. October looks horrific. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, get prepared at Halloween for some kind of horror show. Yeah. But other than that, I, 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 listen, August is swell. August is really nice. And hopefully September is too. Yes, exactly. Just going great. So, obviously, we've got a lot to speak about. So, we're just going to get straight in with pretty much the main event of this podcast. As last Thursday, Rosenborg travelled from Norway to Scotland to play in the second leg against us. See, I was about to say, for qualification for the groups, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's not that. It's qualification. Easy, Tiger. It's qualification for potential qualification to the Europa Conference League groups. And nice. what was basically <laughs> guaranteed before before we, the game was a match with Pauk. And it was then confirmed during the game that it would be against Pauk of Greece. So... We were obviously coming into this 2-1 down in the first tie. Shanklin's goal on his birthday back through in Norway meant that we were still in it. And the team that Stephen A. Smith slash Frankie McAvoy picked for that this Frankie game. Frankie McAvoy yeah. Come on, UEFA might be watching. <laughs> picked for this game. BBC have got it as a 4-4-2. It wasn't a 4-4-2. It was a 4-2-3-1 slash 4-3-3. <laughs> they always drop an absolute nuke when it yes. comes to teams kind of just say like sports scene. Oh my goodness gracious Mental. me! It's an absolute nightmare when you're trying to do the lineups. I only use like Thought Mob or something. Now, yes, so exactly. That's who I use as well. I had a BBC. So carry on. We started with, of course, Xander Clark and goals. A back four of Stephen Kingsley, Kai Rolls, Frankie Kent, and Nathaniel Atkinson. A two of Cami Devlin and Aidan Denham. Aidan Denham being the biggest inclusion, one that many many fans were calling for. And then there was a front three of Oda Boyce in the ten and Alex Cochran taken up a kind of left wing, left cam position with Lauren Shankland leading the line. What did you make of the team when it came out? Um, in terms of kind of players needing to get up to full fitness, that was nice to see with Cochrane. Um, Aiden Denham is the big eyebrow raiser. I, I think midfield's kind of really all that needs discussed because you're going to yeah. start with Shankland. The back four really picks itself and obviously Clark in goal as well. So Really pleased to see Liam Boyce because he just elevates our game absolutely no end. And I think this um, this match proves it. Yep. Um, Alex Cocker obviously is still unavailable for league duty, so it makes sense to get as much out of him as can be. Barry Mackay is still yet to get up to scratch fitness-wise. Um, Itaro Oda is one of the first names on the team sheet as far as I'm concerned, albeit it didn't perform well in this game, but we can look beyond that. So yeah, Aidan Denham is kind of the only really... Surprise, but you would obviously have been gutted with Peter Haring being in that moon boot prior to prior to the second leg. So um it was bold. Um it was baffling actually. If you had gone back like a month or two ago to Aiden Denham and said, Yeah, yeah. we're gonna release you, I don't think many would have had bets on him then being like our starting central midfielder come one of the biggest games of, of our season so far. Well, so, as he, he said himself that four weeks to the day he was working in the bank with his mum as he was awaiting on trial confirmation down south. That's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Like, I, I love this post-match as well. Yeah. Knowing that he's a boyhood fan, that he comes from a family of Jambos, the, the whole granddad having like a tear in his eye of just, Oh, he also just, just spe- I think he's really my, nice. the biggest thing I've been impressed with is he speaks as if he's 29 like 
that yeah. he's a seasoned pro at this point. Like the way he was kind of like, "Yep, it's amazing," but we're just focusing on the next round, focusing on Sunday. Like on this part, <laughs> like, you wonder hard. who's told him to say that kind of yeah. like. I'd love to know who does like the media training at heart. So I'd love to know who sits them all down and just says, "A journalist asks you this. Here's what you say. Here's what you don't say." Yeah, yeah I would definitely. love to know if that comes from management does it come from somebody within the club is it like a pr officer is it i, I don't know i've honestly i've no idea but he he does compose himself really well in the press and composed himself pretty well on the pitch as well he did however great to see. hearts didn't compose themselves very well in the opening few minutes of this oh game goodness, as it was me. pretty much all rosenberg eh, i'm going off the hearts tv highlights of this because the past two games actually Highlights haven't been the easiest things to find. I mean, right. Are, are we going to go into a rant about Viaplay? Sure, fuck it. What an absolute disgrace of an organisation yeah. they really are. Thank God I, we were both at the game, so could just watch the Cup game being there, and then we have Hearts TV, so we can get highlights that way. But that's not the point. You shouldn't like, have to do that. The competition is named after Viaplay. How can you not have highlights up? I get that Obviously, what's happening is happening, but yeah. that shouldn't excuse that, that shouldn't excuse you from the fact that highlights ought to be broadcast. Yeah. Like, I, what? Yeah, Honest to God, like the the day that Scottish football's hopes died with broadcasting was when BT abandoned us or TNT or whatever the hell you want to call them these days. Because as soon as they displayed no interest, it was like Sky or nothing, and we just went, "Yeah, all right, thanks." Let's get Satanta back. Fuck it. Bring anyway. back Satanta. Bring ESPN. Mark Donaldson. What are yeah. you doing? Yeah, get, exactly. get on the floor to Derek Ray and get him commentating the games like like old. Well, this was this game was actually shown live on Sports Scene, oh which is great. And I've seen that actually both the home legs for the European games this week as well will both be on Sports Scene for Hearts and Hibs. Can we talk about that as well? What? Because that's great. But why not show the away legs? Why, why? It's weird that they keep picking the home legs. You should be encouraging folk to go. Yeah, like, it's weird that they're doing that. What? I don't understand. Surely BBC want like the moment where we walk out in Greece. That's a cooler moment than just Gorgie Fishbar in the background that we see a million fucking times. Like they don't even <laughs> they don't even have the argument of this being the first leg because it was the second in the yeah. previous round. Yeah. So. But I don't understand, like, why you choose the home leg to broadcast because you can't be arsed going over to Norway, is basically... <laughs> basically. Or Switzerland, for that matter. Yeah. You'll do it for Rangers. Just Tragic. Yeah. Get a grip, honestly. Well, that's what I was Sorry. shouting at Heart of Midlothian's <laughs> defence as the first action, barring us having a corner that's headed Seamless miles over the bar. segue, so good work. Thank you, by Frankie <laughs> Kent. Rosenborg, within five minutes, opened the scoring, and <laughs> in the eyes of most Hearts fans, both of us included, you think, that's the tie done, yeah. very much so. As Rosenborg won a free kick on the near side to the main stand, far side of the TV camera, it swung in. It's actually a great save by Xander Clark in the initial very instance, good. but he can only palm it back in he kind of just the centre point. There's a little bit of a sclaff in the area, and it just, mash yeah, is the technical term, isn't it? It just pins back to him, gets kind of caught under his arm, under his foot, under his hip, and just crosses <laughs> the line. He desperately tries to pretend it hasn't, and in the grabbing, <laughs> actually pushes it further into the net, and still kind of is like, no, it's fine, but it's 1-0 on the night. we can laugh about this now. Exactly. 1-0 to Rosenborg on the night, 3-1 to Rosenborg, across the two legs, I very much was thinking, that's it. Yeah. Snap. But, as much as our biggest fear became apparent, it's easy now saying that it shouldn't have, but ultimately the objective was still the same. We had to score yeah. two on the night anyway, albeit we would have been then forcing extra time as opposed to the 90 minutes. But, I guess the one positive that we take is the fact that it was so early on and it gave us loads of time to respond. And thankfully, the atmosphere was that good on the night that it did push the team on. We, yeah. Like, we still had all that time. We still had that belief. So, 
as much as we were both writing our chances off, it, thankfully that wasn't the case in the stands and, and on the pitch where it matters most, uh, given it was that early on in the 90. Very but much so. it is such a shit goal to concede, sorry. It's, it's, it's because, so annoying again, because like, it's such a good save as well. And even the concession of the set piece, yeah. because of the area that it's in, because we're kind of slow to react from, as you rightly pointed out, a phenomenal first save from Xander Clark. It's just that we're so slow to kind of clear our lines and obviously they get a second bite of the cherry, which is always annoying. I don't know whether he feels as though he could do better with a second shot, but I certainly feel as though the defence could try and help bail him out. Yeah. Um, but thankfully, we knew the objective in hand heading into the game anyway, and it didn't really have too much of an impact on the evening. Prior to us scoring, because they did look to kind of grab another shortly after, yeah, they did literally within 90 seconds as they get another chance. And I've actually not made a note of his name, but the guy who scored the first goal. Was in, it the left back? Maybe, yeah. The it guy with the blonde to... hair yeah. guy. He has another shot, but it's just dragged wide. And you can start to hear the crowd be like, right, come on now. Settle. This is getting a bit ridiculous. Which, which I get. But to me, it became so apparent that Nathaniel Atkins has obviously been told to defend quite narrow. Yeah. And given Utaro yeah. Oda's up in the abyss, it's not like he's getting much protection there. De- Aiden Denham was on his side. So, again, that inexperience perhaps costing us. Look, Nathaniel Atkins has had these critics. You and I both have obviously voiced our, our concerns, our displeasure at some of his performances. But I was actually beginning to feel for him because what chances he really got when yeah. you're doubling up? And the left back bombs on, and there's so much space on the left hand side. Absolutely, I think it, they knew that we were going to play with inverted fullbacks, so they just yeah. went right double up completely, double up, and we'll do exactly as we did because again, it was the same in the first leg. The boy Nelson, who thankfully yeah. wasn't available this time yeah. out, how much joy did he have in that first leg? So it's exactly the same thing. But again, you're looking for some sort of defensive contribution to help Nathaniel Atkinson out, and we don't get it. Absolutely. Well, a minute later, this the game was very end to end for all ninety seven minutes. That a happened. great watch. Yeah, it really was, it was a, a good, really good, good watch. Game. But we could almost get right back in it. Cochrane throws a ball into the box. It kind of stramashes about a wee bit, and it ends up at Oda, who rifles it against the post. Boyce is in the middle, but there is a covering guy, and then ends back up at Kingsley's feet, who hits it just narrowly past the post. And that gave, it felt like it gave everybody a lift of like, right, yeah. we're in this now. We're, we're switched on. We've uh, we've drank at this bar before. Like, yeah. you know that you've got to get the Hearts crowd on side. Because yep. when they are on your side, it must it's such a game changer. I genuinely cannot think of a stadium elsewhere in world football that has such a disparity between the crowd being on side and in your favour to as toxic <laughs> and anti you as I could possibly imagine. Yeah, it's genuinely unbelievable. And again, it's sort of like, I don't know, like that roar, it's as though we've kind of seen them try and do something. So we're trying to trying to push them on. Yeah. And it, 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 we had we had to do it as quickly as we did. Otherwise then the longer we leave it, the the, the more the kind of anger, frustration worry grows but the chance like if Oda scores fair enough but I thought it favoured the square I'll be honest I know well, you said there's a covering defender but to me if he time, can if he can place it just right voice he's got to tap in and that was a common theme throughout the night can I just say at the time I thought the same I was like just square it what are you doing watching it back I think it has to be the perfect ball to get to him, where yeah. you're not... Yeah, fair enough. Where you're keeping it away from the covering defender, but also away from the keeper. So you have to just perfectly... I understand Boyce's frustration, who's just... You sort of need the keeper and the centre-half to get in the way of one another yeah. as well, and just let it slide, and just then pair come across, like a sliding doors moment. Yeah. It being, it's, it's as though he's trying to slide it through, <laughs> slide it through some uh, moving doors. Yeah, 100%. And then and Liam Boyce has got the freedom. He's only... An inch from it going in, like it hits yeah. the post. Yeah. Like it's not I was going to say one. exactly that. Like if he scores, I'm not. I'm yeah, not no saying cares. that. Yeah, no, exactly. exactly. But it's only because he's missed, 
or hit the post that it it just becomes so annoying. And in the heat of the moment, obviously the tie going the way that it's going, you're thinking. I'm thinking, please do not tell me that we are now going to pepper them. We're going to batter the door down and there's just going to be no answer. Because that was yeah. my fear. I was thinking, please do not be another Zurich because that was just yeah. heartbreaking. We don't want to be going back and looking at this thinking, Rosenborg were there for the taking. Because I look at Zurich and think they were there for the taking. We could have been in the Europa groups. So thankfully, that wasn't the case uh, this time around. It nearly was as Aidan Denham loses it in the oh middle of the God. park and they break towards our goal. Shot towards Clark is actually, I was giving them praise for the save we made, it's a terrible save as he just pushes it towards oncoming Rosenborg players right into their path. But, and this is actually, surprisingly, this is the first time I'm saying his name tonight, but Devlin kind of does a very the one where he buys the foul because kind yeah. of rolls and Denham are static, isn't they? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We were of, lucky to get away with that defensively. Very much so. When they blew the whistle, I thought he was given a penalty, and I shit myself. <laughs> I no, like, I, oh, saw, I saw Devlin nip in, and as soon as I saw him gain possession, I was like, well, if he buys the foul here, just let's all calm down, yeah, let's just right. relax, well, like, regain composure, and just keep it, keep it cool and keep doing what you're doing. Somebody who was very calm and kept his composure was Lauren Shankland. As, oh my goodness. On the Daniel 13th McIver. minute, Stephen Kingsley plays a ball that is not meant for Lawrence Shankland. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I've had this debate with countless people. Stephen Kingsley is not even looking at Lawrence <laughs> Shankland. It's a ball that he sends up into the abyss. Yeah. Yes, he's played it several times beforehand. That does not excuse the fact that... Exactly. He's not looking. We're lucky that Shankland's awake yeah. and sort of scrapping with the defender, but... Carry on. That's good from Kingsley, by the way. That's not a criticism of him. That's good that he's just it sends it into a wonderful in. area. Yeah. But you're not telling me it that he saw it. Shankland and just no. went, oh, here, Lawrence, I'll just scoop it in behind no, for you. Definitely no not. danger. But the ball does go in behind, and it's quite flat-footed defending from the Rosenberg centre half. Yeah. And it allows Shankland, who isn't exactly known for his pace, to be running no. onto a ball, gets but, through. Oh. Sorry, McIver. He's so clever in that he's occupying the centre half. Yes. In the chance that Kingsley does play that ball, albeit we we said that it's a small percentage, the chance that he does play that, he's alive and alert, he's looking for it, he's sort of looking to nip in behind. He does, and what happens, happens. Just an amazing dinked finish because he sees the keeper coming out, the confidence to oh. not just snatch at it, not just go, I'm just putting power behind this. He places it over the keeper oh. within the big thing that you want. Ah, when you concede, chef's kiss. When you concede a goal so early, what you want is to respond early. And we responded yeah. within eight minutes. You basically just go, right, it's nil nil again. Game plans. As you yeah. said, the game plan is the exact same as normal. Shanklin gets another goal at the start of this season, and it's one all. Back to square one. And as you say, like you you've basically summed it up perfectly. It's just an exquisite finish. Yeah. That is just absolutely top drawer. If that was kind of Sergio Aguero of in the Premier League a couple of years back, nobody would bat an eyelid. Like he knows exactly what he's doing with it. He's so cool, so calm, and thankfully, just as he did in Norway, keeps the tie alive pretty much single handedly. Because again. <laughs> I love Stephen Kingsley bits, but I ain't getting him with this goal. Yeah, that's very fair. Well, whilst everybody was loving Stephen Kingsley and Lauren Shankland, I tell you one person that the heart support was not loving, and that was the Israeli referee in the middle of the ground. Because now is a perfect time to speak about him. Because in the twenty third minute, Hearts have a massive penalty shout as a corner is swung in, oh. and Frankie Kent goes to run look. for a header and just gets completely taken out. Now. At this stage of the competition, there's no VR. I haven't actually checked if there's VR in the next round. I don't I'm actually gonna assume, know. I'm going to assume not, which is a joke, if I'm honest. But it's completely waved away, and we will have the discussion about the referee now. Now, I will say this, in the interest of fairness, I think Aidan Denham is very lucky to stay in the park. I think yes, he's, I. his challenge is a red card. I think a VR, it's a red card. But I can't remember a referee 
it may be David Dickinson on Sunday, in fairness, against Kilmarnock. Or last but, week. Yeah, but <laughs> generally, I can't remember a referee that was so inconsistent. And I, I do mean this against both sides, but it did feel like if we touched anybody, Rosenberg got a free kick. If they just barreled into us, there was one in the second half where Devlin gets a two-handed shove into his back, nothing. Shanklin gets an elbow into his, the side of his head, nothing. I didn't understand the inconsistencies from the referee. I imagine Rosenberg fans will be really annoyed with the Aiden Denham thing because if he does get sent off, that's before we do what we end up doing, can change the yeah. game entirely. But how, at this level of club football, is a referee that bad? McIver, the Premier League is two weeks into its season, one of the richest, most watched leagues in the world, and their referees are still shocking. They yeah, were one of the been one of the pioneers of VAR. Already. VAR was literally introduced into their league at one of the earliest opportunities, and they're still contention every single week. I I cannot for the life of me. I don't know if it's because we're getting older, because we're taking more of an interest, because it, like I, I don't know. It seems to like it seems to resonate with us more. I cannot remember across the board a worse standard of re- like officiating and refereeing mm. as we've become accustomed to seeing now. It is genuinely unbelievable. And I don't know if that's because they're meddling with the rules too much or there's just, like it should be easier with the technology that they've got. It's just not. Yeah, it's crazy. And I and don't understand it. That was the thing for me on Thursday night. It was so many just... you Because, listen, some refs go within five minutes, he's flashed a card. And it's like, that's what he's going to do. That's his style. He's not going to put other stuff. Other refs will allow a game to flow and not... Listen. And that's fine. That's individual refereeing standards as long as you're going with the rules. What I, The biggest issue I had with this referee is that it's like, you're not sticking to your rules because yeah. fouls that you've given earlier, you're not given. And that can sometimes be for the same team. For our benefit, it happens right at the very end of the game. We're trying to waste time. Atkinson kicks his own heel and falls over, and the ref immediately gives a free kick to us and books the Rosenberg player, and 10 minutes earlier, when it's all tied up, the same thing happens to a Rosenberg player, Rolls goes in from behind him, and we just get the ball and nothing happens. I Look, I know this is obviously a hearts-heavy podcast. We're going to be biased. We're going to look at things through maroon tinted specs. You're welcome for the free plug. Um, <laughs> but in all seriousness, like... It was that bad that we only remember the ones that should have gone in our favour. Yeah. We also had occasions where we got let off the hook. There was a and challenge I, Boyce made in the second half that I was like, that's nearly a penalty. It was right on the edge of our box. It was a shocking even, challenge. We just went anything. away with the ball and just, it was fine. Uh, how bad was the linesman on our side? How many fouls did the, the, the left back want to take? It was unbelievable. Uh, uh, what? It was so bad. I can read at least two. Uh, it must have been three or four, and not one spoken about. Yeah, I was just like, I was just thinking to myself, if we get a throw in, just just take it however you want, because it's surely one it, arm it, chuck it. Logic applies. Just, yeah. just well, like, what on earth? I couldn't believe what I was watching. Yeah, it was so so bad, so bad. But thankfully, it didn't affect us in the long run because for the rest of the first half, we were very much in control. Oda breaks, yeah. finds Shanklin, who does a really nice spin. Attempts oh. to square it to Boyce this time, oh. but the defender actually does really well to block it into his keeper's path. Then Kingsley sent to the cross. Sorry, was that off the break where Devlin won it back? In yes, it is. yes, yes, it is. Yes, that was actually building up to be a really nice counter attack. It would have been an amazing goal if it had gone in to turn like to, to level up the tie. We're in the ascendancy. We've got the whole second half still to play. But again, like I, I thought that was another guaranteed boy square. <laughs> How Liam Boyce did not get on the score sheet, I will never know. Crazy. But he's just, he's such a game changer for us. Such a oh, big yeah. for us. When he's fit, he's first name on the team sheet. Like, Without a doubt. So important. Stephen Kingsley sends in a cross that's met by Kai Rolls, who headers it just off the bar, oh, but the so other lucky. way. So he just goes out for a goal kick. We actually are winning headers now from. Kai <laughs> Rolls is winning headers as well. <laughs> It's just unbelievable. We, we, we'll, we'll come on to that as well with another match later yes, on in the week. Exactly. Unbelievable. And then the last highlight of the first half, Devlin wins the ball, which if you were drinking to that sentence during that game, I don't think you'll still be awake oh. now. Like, unbelievable. Plays it Elian Boyce, who finds Cochrane, whose effort from the edge of the box is punched away by the Rosenborg keeper. First half ends, we're very much in the ascendancy. 
Yeah. At this point, I was thinking, we definitely have a chance here as long as we get the next goal. Oh, 100%. 100%. And, you know, I say it all the time. Hearts and a fast start, name me a more iconic <laughs> duel. And had, had we signed up for that in the second half, then we give, the, give ourselves the very best opportunity. The tie's all levelled up. And we know we know that well we've got to be wary of the threat that they pose on the counter attack. As you say, the vast majority of fans are ours. We're at home. We're under the lights. Let's just go for it. Um, the, I was about to actually just start with the second half highlights, but I should mention something big happened at halftime. Oda got hurt, which was further proven by his omission completely from the Park Thistle game at the weekend. That we'll yeah, come to. I, I saw him. So I'm walk up and into the stands, kind of, you know, where the, the journals sit and yeah. it's kind of between the journals and the dugout. And at least he was walking. I didn't see any form of like when that. I saw the him game up finished, in the stand. When the game finished, he was walking around but was heavily limping. Oh dear. So hopefully he's all right. But what hopefully that meant right. was the first appearance of the season for Barry Mackay. He's back after his ankle surgery. He's and ready to go. What what I was going to say is that I didn't feel as though Oda was all that effective, really. No, yes, he, was... he had the one that hit the post. And, like, yeah, he played his part for that Shanklin stroke boys chance. But other than that, you, you sort of tended to forget that he was playing, really. I, didn't, I don't I didn't know think when he was he up to hurt. much. So no, that might yeah, that could have had a big bearing on it. Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm not sure. Um, but please, is he Barry Mackay back? Cause I, Very much so. I, I, like, he, he's one of those players that... He gets a lot of stick in the heart support, Barry Mackay. But in terms of somebody on the flank, I don't think we've got anybody that can produce that same pass as him or yeah, definitely not. that same kind of game defining moment, be it a pass or the. I mean, he was popping up with goals the season before last yeah. toward the end eventually. So, you know, if we persist long enough, <laughs> albeit you're, you're still not having him in a big game. But <laughs> well, <laughs> there, there is a chance. Yeah. There's a chance he turns up in one. Well, the most heart of Midlothian 98 seconds happens now because <laughs> at the start of the second half, Rosenberg. No, counter, usually it's the other way. Yeah, true. <laughs> Rosenberg counter, which eventually ends up with Atkinson, who tries to clear it, but he clears it against Kai Rolls. That then goes under Clark, who attempts to die for it, and it is trickling towards going in. But thankfully, the guy who cleared it, Nathaniel Atkinson, is there to actually clear it this time and get it away. I was wincing yeah. through this, because it was obviously up my side. Yep. And I thought, there is no day... This is one of those goals that you can see on FIFA, and yeah. your, your controller is launched through the, win- <laughs> like the telly or the window. Like, oh my goodness gracious me. And the fact that it came off rolls and he's just sort of bobbling about, oh yeah. my God, I breathe the biggest sigh of relief. And those are kind of, football's down to like the fine margins. Yeah. And th- like the, the definitive moments. I don't know what it was, but from that moment on, I thought, oh my God, we actually do have a chance here. Yeah, Because like, agree. had that have gone in, it's dead. Yeah, it, it, the atmosphere is it's killed. Especially the way it happens, it's the not manner like of the goal. That, a, yeah, a exactly. It's, like, oh, it's a great it's, goal. It's it's, like we've essentially dance. shot ourselves in the foot. Yeah, and that would have just exactly. It was the same with the uh, George Grant red card. I know I'm harping yeah. on about Zurich a lot, but that as soon as that happened, that killed it that night. Like, oh my! Oh my God! <laughs> Honestly, well, that is the type of goal that it gives you just nightmares. Thank God we avoided it on this occasion. Atkinson's clearance actually ends up all the way back at the Rosenborg goal. He sends his foot through it that much. They then kind of attempt to build from the back, but in something that he was often chastised for not doing last season, Barry Mackay bursts a gut to intercept a ball from the back line to the midfield. He then drives forward, finds Shankland, who finds Boyce, yeah. Oh, 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 hold on a sec, let me stop you there. He tries to play in Cochrane, and as much yeah, as does. I was talking about a killer <laughs> pass, that was a shocker. Yeah, he does. Thankfully, we get, thankfully it's bumbling around. Yes, it's it's in and around the area, and it lands at the best person's feet to have it when oh you're wanting touch-tight football. Liam Boyce feints a shot, 
sends two Norwegian defenders to See the Gorky later. Fish Thanks bar. Thanks for coming. They're away. Hits a great effort. And in fairness to Hansen and goals, it's a really good save. It should score, goals. but it is a good save. It's a good save. And then... <laughs> <laughs> A man who I think every single Hearts fan, when they saw who it felt to, went, shit. The one person you don't <laughs> want it to fall to is a steaming 100 mile an hour Kami Devlin. And for some, flow. for some reason, he puts all the power in the world on it, even though he's two yards out. That's just goes, a look cool. It is, yeah. It goes directly <laughs> up in the air, but thankfully it is stopped by the bar, bounces in, 2-1 on the night, 3-all in the tie, the place goes mental. I didn't know what to do at this moment. I laughed a wee bit because it's Devlin and I thought he'd missed. I uh, I spoke to Cammy and he was aiming for the bottom corner. Amazing. I'll get, I'll get you on. I'll get you on. I would um, believe it. I would so <laughs> believe that Devlin goes, I need to tap this in. And then he ends up putting a rocket behind it. That would have been the most carry Devlin goal imaginable. I saw your uh, dad capitalised on Twitter. Oh, like, swear on tragic. <laughs> He's a loser. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I was like, you sad, sad man. And, was, and what made it worse is Cammy got back to him. I know <laughs> he did. He's he did. digging me, but he's replying yeah. to my old man. Like, what's yeah, going on? There's clear priorities and I support them. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Embarrassing. Uh, but no, I was in that exact same boat because I was standing with a couple of pals that have that have been put through the ringer by this football club as we all have. <laughs> and I think we were all just in disbelief that holy shit, we're actually like we're actually fully on board. Like this is it. Like we're only a goal away. <laughs> Anything's possible. How, we didn't see that at one nil. A bedlam, absolute Lindsay Lohan. And uh, can I just say a word on the Gorgi Ultras because that look behind the goal, Mental. absolutely bonkers. They were brilliant all night. They really were. I thought that their display was good in terms of G and the boys up and G and everybody in the stands up. I, I, I'm thinking that they're doing a really good job. I've, I've got to be honest. I don't think that the club are really giving them enough credit. Um, and, I, and I see now that they're kind of open to accepting donations and people are managing to, to contribute and whatever. Um, I'm not quite in the financial predicament to do so, <laughs> but once I can, I certainly will be because they've been, they've been absolutely top drawer. I'm going to need to get a hoodie or something and, try and get it on in the pod because I think they're doing a, a really good job and I, just um, um, just magic, absolutely magic, up that end and just crazy, bodies everywhere. Well, if you thought that was mental, for some reason there's just no more highlights from the 50th. That's because they were growing into the game and we very yeah. nearly pissed it away. Yeah, we did. <laughs> but you're thinking, right, we've made a bunch of attacking subs, we don't want this to go to extra time but it's no. increasingly looking likely. Right, okay, we'll go to extra time here. However, a long ball, much similar to Kingsley's in the first half, it's quite aimless, but this is why he was bought, this is why he was brought in. Tagler's speed <laughs> just manages to make a nothing ball into something as he gets on the end of it. He cuts it back to Devlin on the edge, who Cruyff turns and whose initial shot I think he's going down the dugout. But thankfully, <laughs> Shankland is there. He just literally stop it and go, no, have it back. Have it again. I think he's going to the mascot in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Gives it back to Devlin, who inexplicably after that first shot goes, I'm good enough to take another bite of this. It's fine. Continues his trend of absolutely horrific shots that inexplicably do amazing things. Uh, down that end as well. Yeah, down it. He just will only play towards the Gorgian. Hits it towards goal. Hansen goes to dive. Well, not even dive. I think Hansen goes to just bend and pick it up because it's trundling towards him. But his oh. centre half in front of him sticks a leg out. It hits the leg and just goes into the back of the net. 92nd minute and everyone just goes 
ballistic. Gami Devlin shushing fans who were taking the piss out of him. Atkinson's jumping on his back. I saw Frankie Kent and Shanko basically do like an American football chest touch in the middle of the box <laughs> together. There's folk on the ground. There's... Alex Cochran's turned the goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> running back. Cochran does that all the time and it's a major reason I love him. He's the boy. What a guy. And unbelievably... It's 3-1 on the night, and for the first time in the tie, we're ahead. I felt like greeting my eyes out. That was just <laughs> amazing. Yeah. So good. Honestly, that's like... Oh. See, like, see, like that feeling? Just... Yeah. I get, it, I, like get, it. I get it every time we score at Easter Road. Like, yeah. it just... If you could bottle it up and sell it, you'd make an absolute killing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could not believe my eyes. I honestly thought I thought that I needed to be pinched or something. I was having some sort of epiphany, some sort of dream. <laughs> Just absolutely wild. And listen, <laughs> I'm not going to kid on like it wasn't very fortunate, the goal. But, but, and I will say this, I felt as though over the 180 minutes, there were countless times where we were needing that bit of luck. Mm -hmm. Whether it be like, the final pass or a refereeing decision going in our favour or I don't know, just just some kind of some kind of shot being blocked or something. We'll take that, given I felt there were numerous occasions over the tie, as I say, we were we were we were unlucky. Something hadn't quite come off for us. Thankfully this did. Perfect timing. Arguably the perfect goal scorer and a perfect night. Just Brilliant. I mean, we we have been gagging on a European night like that for what twenty years? Yeah, I was going to say pretty <laughs> much our life. Years. Yeah, just crazy. And look, I, we're up against it in the playoff. I'm not going to yeah. hit on like we're not. But that just put that to one side. Just enjoy the night yeah. for what it was. Hearts were trailing. We've overturned it. I think it's only something like the third or fourth time that we've managed to overturn. Since the 80s. In, it's the first time since the 80s. That there we've you done go. It. Yeah. In our history. So just enjoy it for what it is. It was brilliant. Absolutely class. On that, I want to specifically mention Cammy Devlin because without his two goals, he was man of the match. Without oh. him, we don't win that game. I said McIver on Twitter. Covered every night, blade of grass. Yeah. I said he, and, he and Shankland, for somebody that's so disinterested, yeah, yeah, exactly. Lauren Shankland yeah. worked his bollocks off up front. He did. He, he was, was phenomenal. There was the a pair of them were excellent, in like the, the goals. In like the 93rd minute, Shankland's tracking back and winning ahead of defensively and stuff like that. Chasing lost causes, just yeah. getting us up the park. But Brilliant. there is no one else in this football club that can do what Devlin did on Thursday night in terms of that stamina, passion, heart, desire. And it, you often get that thing where it's like, oh, it feels like it's a Hearts fan playing, but with ability. Yeah. Sometimes with Devlin, it doesn't even feel like the ability's there. It just <laughs> feels like there's the intensity. Just the drive, desire, yeah. and commitment. But I, I was saying, he had three of the worst shots I've ever seen a professional footballer take <laughs> on a night and scored two of the most now recently iconic goals in our history with them. Yeah. Yeah. When you, when you put it like that, I mean, it is... It is nuts. He even said it, didn't he? Post match, yeah. he said it's up there in one of the best nights of my career. Yeah. So brilliant. What what a guy! And and thankfully, sort of shut a few folk up because yeah. I think there was a lot. Oh, and look, everybody's got an opinion. There were some that didn't even want Devlin or Shanklin to start. So ultimately, hearts of hearts have surprised us, exceeded our expectations. So accept it for what it is, and just. Enjoy the night. That's what that's what it's all about. It's it's nights like that that make you persist with hearts because we know that they can be a pain in the arse. We know that they're a bugbear. It's why we run a weekly podcast discussing the misfortune on them. So we take the rough with the smooth, and that was fantastic. Well, not only was Thursday night a reminder why you stick with hearts, Thursday night was clearly a reminder as why you want to join hearts for a certain individual <laughs> who was nice. there as the Brighton youngster. Odell, and then I've had three different. I've been told three different ways of saying it: Ophia, Ophia, or Ophia. 
I don't know which one it is. A right back so far. That's yeah. who everybody wants <laughs> it to be. But I think it's Ophea. I think it's, I don't know, Odell, basically, is his name. No, and you've he's, got to go with that Kings of Leon song, 100%. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so he was there with Joe Savage and then just immediately signed. He is a centre half who can also play right back. He's absolutely huge. He's <laughs> strong. He's fast. He's composed. And basically, he's been brought in for cover for Atkinson. We saw, we'll get into it in a wee minute. He had his debut. As far as debut goes, bloody hell, you've set a high bar for yourself, Adele. Yeah, but it's his first loan in senior football. Uh, he has made one appearance for Brighton at the very end of last season. Um, so yeah, just very chuffed that we finally got a position that I was worried about we weren't going to have cover in, and he seems good. Definitely. But when I watched him on Sunday, I mean, just by looking at his sheer stature, you think centre half, because he's a big, Aye. big boy. He's he is somebody I would not like to mess with. Um, Just looks a really, really good athlete. I don't know if he needs to kind of go out on loan to develop him as a footballer. Because he just said, on the day that he joined here. us, he also signed a new three-year deal with Brighton. So they obviously hold him in high regard, and yeah. you need only look at what Brighton are doing. Um, I mean, that's why Hibs were so keen to get them as kind of yeah, a, a, a partnership and what have you, and have loaned absolutely nobody from them. Um, yeah. So, Davey Weir, you are uh, a hero, <laughs> and your that's work the thing, though, is not going unnoticed. It is like, if he's even half as good as Cochrane was, I'll be yeah. happy. Yeah, absolutely. exactly. I mean, look at Brighton picking up these wonder kids from here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. Why don't we just announce a, a partnership with Brighton and yeah. just get it right up Hibs? Let's, no, let's just but then it. they'll start sending folk to Hibs and it'll ruin everything. So <laughs> this way it's fine. So, no, Davey Weir wouldn't do that. He'll send true. the duds to Hibs. Yeah, that's he'll, he'll send out the, the few that they get wrong down there. Yes. Yeah. So, Odell comes in and then we had this weekend, which was our first appearance this season in the League Cup. Now, before we get into our game, we will... Of <laughs> much better than last year's. Much better than last year's. <laughs> We will cover all the other games first. So, on the Friday night, Aberdeen just get past Sterling Albion 2-1. Bino's a rock name. of a pen as well. Disgrace. They they absolutely Again, were. VAR. Yeah. Like, oh, Mental. If, 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 it can, if it can't be used, then just, just forget it in the cup competitions. What's the point? On the Saturday, there was four games as St Mirren, probably more comfortably than the scoreline suggested, beat Motherwell 1-0. Uh, Livingston, Finally got back to winning ways as they beat <laughs> a United 2-0. Uh, Rangers beat Greenock Morton 2-1, despite going behind, which was interesting. That was an eyebrow razor. I tell you what, had Morton held on, oh. and obviously what happened on the Sunday, oh my goodness. That would have been very interesting. But the game of the weekend was definitely Ross County Airdrie, as Ross County were 3-1 up with 10 minutes left. Airdrie taking extra time, and then... Ross County score. However, that did my mate out of 350 quid. So that's funny. Did he have county? Aye. Oh my <laughs> god. I, I actually quite fancy to be upset there. Um so really when I saw that Airdrie were trailing with 10 minutes to go, I was like, no, oh, that's yeah, some that's upset bad. that. And then they got back to three each. I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> here we go. I think Gary Gary O'Connor's boy came off the bench for them and scored, so. didn't he? Josh. Yeah. yeah. So I um and then that's on the funny. Sunday. We had our game, which we'll get into. Hibbs just managed to get past Ian Murray's Wraith. And then the big <laughs> talking point of the round was that treble winners, come on, <laughs> ended up knocking out Celtic, still yet to concede domestically within the league and this cup competition. And the holders <laughs> are out. How can we have the best result against Kelly this season and it's a goalless draw? I know, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's metal. That point in time, Castle looks like a great result now. Well, that's what I was going to say. It does. It genuinely shows how that is actually quite a good result. Oh, mental. I, I mean, wow. Did not see that no. coming in a million years, given Rodgers' record. That's his first ever cup tie defeat as Celtic and manager. 24, 24 out of 24. Aye, that's yeah. ridiculous, isn't it? No. Um, absolutely baffling. So that's what a ninety-six percent success rate. Yeah, and over his two, I like that. It's just nuts. Um, in terms of other games, I mean, at Wraith Rovers as well got back on level terms. Yeah. You were thinking, go on, go I on, mean, come on, here we are. But sadly, to no avail. Um, yeah, elsewhere, I think 
it was kind of as folk expected. Everything I, I, went I, away. I, yeah, I, I, I did. I did anticipate the one shot with maybe Airdrie, but even then, like they got it back and still threw it away. And that's just a common theme among sides that we're going to discuss. Because my goodness, Partick Thistle. Well, yikes. this is the thing. So we have our game. I described this afterwards as it felt like a preseason friendly. Yeah, I got that same impression as well, mate. Definitely. Was, I, I don't know if it's because how early we scored the first. Maybe. And I, and I, and I guess the second, but certainly in that second half, it did just, it did just not, fade was, out into, into nothingness. But it was quite nice. It, it was nice great. being at football and just having that, not having that worry or not having that kind of... I don't know, dread of what you think is going to happen. Nice to not play with that high intensity and feel as though you're going to get punished for it. It was it was calm. It was a, a professional performance in yeah, the end. It was great. Uh, so the team came out, and I'll be honest, that kicked me out of bed because I didn't know it was a two o'clock kickoff. And at five to one, <laughs> I was lying in bed going, the team's out very early. And then shit myself so much to make it in with five minutes to go. So <laughs> love that. And the team was heavily rotated from Thursday night, obviously, but still a very strong side. So BBC, I've got this one right. There's a four two three one. Don't know why. But I can I just say start. two two o'clock kickoffs? I'm a fan. I mean, the, the 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 team that I do the, know that so, the team that I do our socials for we kick off at a two every Saturday. It's great. The game's done, and you're just seeing this like this, the three o'clocks. Just the, the outcomes of them come in. It's it's nice. And I came straight up from work as well, so I was like, yes, that's one less hour that I'm going to have to piss about in Engorgie. So yes. two o'clock kickoffs. Keep them keep them coming. Well, we lined up. 4-2-3-1 with Clark and goals, a largely similar defence as Cochrane, Rolls and Kent all kept their place on Thursday night, but Odell did get his debut at right back. We then played a two of Neuenhoff and Sibic with both Devlin and Denham getting replaced. Very interesting. So, very interesting. And then front three, also totally different, of Kenny Vargas getting his first start, Barry Mackay getting his first start since he's returned from injury, and Alex Lowry replacing Liam Boyce in the 10 with Shankland up front. When you saw that level of rotation, were you happy? But did it also make you be like, oh God, we might fuck this? Because it was a rotated I mean, side, but still a very strong side. Yeah. I, I mean, there's always there's always a wee cause for concern that you're rotating a, a fair few, but I think I think that was the team that most of us would have picked, really. Mm -hmm. Bar, I guess it depends what your preference is in midfield. Nice to see Toby Civic get a run out. Yep. Uh, right back making his debut. Brilliant. Um, Kenny Vargas, we obviously want to see what he can do. Alex Lowry, you could put him in that same folder. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that was as, as good as we could. It was the perfect blend of kind of first teamers or those that are of a vital importance, like your Frankie Kent, your Lauren Shanklins, and those that are sort of not the backup brigade, but those that kind of a chance has presented itself. Yeah. So, let's see what you can do. Well, Again, this is Hearts TV highlights. And it's very much just, here's the oh, goals, and that's it. Yeah, I saw it. It was like seven and a half minutes, the package or something. Yeah, and like yeah. four and a half minutes of that is the goals. So As you say, pre-season friendly. Yeah, deal. there's no much, so, to, uh, yeah. no much else to show. So the first highlight is the first goal. As 10 <laughs> minutes in, Alex Lowry sends in a corner that deflects off Brian Graham, who's trying to clear it, but he clears it in his own net, and we're 1-0 up. Hooray. Nice, nice to score from a corner. It is, exactly. <laughs> Love that. Nice to not concede from a corner. Does that count as an Alex Lowry assist? Because I, I don't, don't think it does. I've seen I him only get so. given as two assists on the day when he should have had three. Uh, oh, yeah, I suppose. I Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I don't think it counts. I mean, it, it's not... It's not it's really... a, it should be an assist. He was the person, he played in, that then deflects off and goes in. But you're like you can't. Assi you're not. You're assisting the opponent. Yeah, but the opponents assisted us by scoring for yeah. us. I don't know. I, I think it's it bollocks. He should have been given a hat trick of assists. It I'm doesn't... sticking up for you, Alex. I'm going. That's, your back. that's just because you don't want Chile to be the last person to have registered a hat trick of assists for us. That's maybe true, but still, <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, um, I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm having that. He was very good, though, Alex Lowry. Was... Over very, the piece, very yeah. impressive. That's uh, that's the the definition of taking your chance. I believe they yep. call it. 
very chuffed with him. Uh, nothing then happens until the 37th minute as Lowry hits a free kick. Is this even a highlight? Lowry no. hits a very tame free Forget- kick. Very David forgettable Mitchell. free kick. Yeah, David Mitchell claims and goes. Then, Park Thistle's only highlight is a 25-yard speculative effort from Harry Milne, Harry Milne. that goes yeah, over the bar. Right. And then we get to the very end of the first half. We're already here. And the 44th minute, Mackay finds Lowry in the box, whose effort's cleared. And then from the ensuing corner, Odell Fire jumps about a foot and a half higher than his marked defender, who heads it in. It's in off the bar and bounces. And you're like, oh, is it in? What's happening? Don't know. But Willie Cobb, no, it wasn't Willie Cobb. It was John Beaton. Gives I just the goal. to the ref straight away. Yeah. Gives the gives the goal and it's a uh, very lovely. He said in his post match interview, it's his first ever goal in senior football, and he says it's his career highlight more than making his debut in the Premier League. Oh, that's really nice. So it's so great. It was it was a goal that his performance deserved, and I it know it's part of Thistle. I know it's a second tier side. I know that he didn't it's a really Jags team that has been that has been decimated over the summer, um, given obviously what happened in in their playoff final. So. You do have to put things into perspective, but I thought it was very good. But you still very can good. only play against what's in front of you. Exactly. He didn't put a foot wrong. And like like I jokingly said earlier on, we made a right null hunt of the second round yeah, last season. So yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll take those. Uh, yes, it was arguably a favorable a more favorable draw, but I, I mean what what more do you want me to say? He, he was really good. Really good. And and looked just as Decent offensively as he did comfortable defensively. Definitely. Uh, second half starts and immediately the game's dead as really poor play at the back from Party Thistle allows Shanklin to intercept and just, just clear your lines. Yeah, I don't so, know. Like, do I can appreciate if you want to play out from the back, that's great, but sometimes just Not stick a Party Thistle it. against Hart. At Tyne Castle, exactly, <laughs> it's insanity. It's like, what are you doing? Just clear your lines. Yeah, but Shanklin again, you race through and time slowed down. You just you knew it, you knew he was tucking that. Yep, definitely. Uh, that was, as I say, very much the game died then, as you say, it very much felt in the second half, just like pedestrian at a lot of points. Uh, the next highlight it was nice. until... It was great. I really enjoyed it. That, that'll do me. wasn't until the 72nd minute where, again, really poor passing for Party Thistle and it ends up at Boyce's feet and Boyce just kind of shoots... Oh, my God. Yards. I wasn't even <laughs> watching. I, I can't remember what it was. I think I was chatting to the person next to me. I couldn't believe they took the free kick so quickly. I don't, what, I don't know what Ben Williams is thinking. Kerr McEnroy is not even looking. And Boyce, like... I just want I want Liam Boyce to talk on so badly. Now that he's back, back in full flow, I just want him to score so badly. Yeah. And I, I was watching it, I was like, did that did that did that just happen? Yeah. Like, am I am, why why was like not a big deal made of that? It was so I don't know if it's because the tie was dead, as you say. Yeah, maybe. That we sort of just didn't consider what was actually happening. <laughs> it was know. weird. Really weird. It's very weird. However, the last kind of mean. Yas moment that I was chuffed with was Woo! the score a fourth. As Tagawa! Exactly. <laughs> Alex Lowry and Tagawa do really well in the middle of the park before Lowry plays in Tagawa. And I think at the moment I just shouted, This is you! <laughs> he just, <you've> got <laughs> and he gets it, his first goal for Hart. He's buzzing. We all do the tequila song that doesn't oh, work exactly. with his name, but it's great. Uh, I wasn't even giving a shit because I didn't even think it was that great a finish, but I was just going, take our work! I think it is. I think it's fun. I don't know. But listen, every striker is going to say the exact same thing. Get off the mark as quick as you can. Yeah. He's now done that. The monkey's off his back and hopefully he can he can kick on. Uh, love that song. I don't even it's care cute. that I don't even care that it's pronounced Tagawa. I'm going to pronounce it Tagawa purely <laughs> for that. Sorry, mate. So then, there's no much else to the report. The final few moments is just everyone trying to get on the score sheet. Vargas tries to. I thought Kenny Vargas played very well. He's really intense. He's a little rage, and yeah. I I like him. Yeah. I, there was there was the instance where. Is it Shanklin cuts back for him and it just yeah. slides past the post and you're like, oh. That was this I, chance. That was this yeah, chance. Yeah, I thought, oh. If, that would have capped it off as well for me because he, he, you could tell he wanted one as well, yeah, I think. Definitely. And I'd, I'd have loved to have seen how he just celebrated. Probably like yeah. some kung fu kick on like the corner flag or something. I could just, I think he's got that in him. He's just, 
Yeah, he's already got cult hero vibes for me. I, I, I love that wee Raj. I really like him. In the 80th minute, Stephen Kingsley goes on a great run, beats two players, and has Vargas free in the middle, but you can just tell he's like, I've been on this <laughs> class run, mate. I'm hitting this. And in fairness, <laughs> it's a good hit, and it's a good save post. for David Mitchell. No, David oh. Mitchell palms it around the uh, oh, post. Right. Then at the very end of the game, the last kick the of the post. game is Tagawa, Lowry, and Boyce all link up well before it falls to Kingsley on the edge, who hits it against the post. That's all she wrote. We're into the next round, and you're thinking, right, we then find out Celica knocked out, and you're like, God. Live at home. Live at home. Live at home. 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 Everybody else, it's like, we're probably going to be <laughs> right. I mean, knowing, knowing us, we'll probably get Rangers away. And then you look at it and go, oh, no, I think we've got the hardest tie possible. We've got Kilmarnock away. We're going to get knocked out of the cup by Kelly two years back to back. <laughs> this competition in Kilmarnock. <laughs> Name me a more iconic duo. Um, look, it's, it's annoying. Um... It's a month away they'll be shit by then. They'll have conceded 84 goals. Just just got to try and build momentum heading into that game because yeah. it'd be great to get to Hamden again. Um, I'm just... I don't know. I, I saw some folks say that they'd rather it be at Rugby Park than at Tynecastle. That's mental. No, I'm not yeah, I'm not sure I agree with that. Oh, yeah, honest. the place where they've just kept back-to-back clean sheets against the old firm and beaten Mid-week them Midweek match. Everybody makes a big deal of that pitch. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm delighted that I'll get to nip along, but... Oh, I, of course. It's perfect I'm, for you. I, 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 am I feeling confident? <laughs> Let, let's 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 cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah. Well, the bridge that you need to cross now with boot confidence is this Thursday nice. as we play Pauk of Greece. The first this ties at home. How are you way. feeling? Listen, we've seen the maps and the graphs and everything that show whilst... There is a clear outlier in the Scottish ties between mm-hmm. Aston Villa and Hibs in terms of discrepancies with finances. We are yeah. very much the second to that, as there is a massive jump between us. I, I'm not going to sit here and go, we've got absolutely no chance. But in my opinion, if we won this tie, it would probably be the biggest result in our lifetime in terms of like beating a side in com- in competitive. Moments because obviously you have Anfield and then we, but we got beat, and then we drew at White Hart Lane, but it meant nothing because the game was dead. Well, technically, we drew at Anfield as well. I, yeah, I, we did. Yeah, yeah, we drew. We drew both them, but got beat. I'm talking about if we somehow yeah. make it to the groups. I can't. Oh think yeah, of a, uh, uh, we'd have, we'd have been, it would have been. It would have up against the odds. I mean, yeah. don't get me. Don't get me wrong. Whole of Scottish football has been laughing at us and ridiculing us for this management team malarkey. It would be a massive get it right round <laughs> you to every everybody else. In fairness, um, I did have a, so I've got a few mates obviously who are non Hearts fans, and they're all kind of just in and around Scottish football. And a lot of them have been saying it's clearly working for you because no one expected us to overturn Rosenborg. I think most no. people didn't watch the game the first leg, so just saw oh we got beat. All right, you probably go. You beat, them. and then we were probably two 0 down, and thought, "Oh yeah, that's yeah. definitely it." Um, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? If we can, if we can keep things tight, sharpen up defensively, Jesus, and Nick one or two, but Nick one, go over there protecting a slender lead, then we're in with a chance. But I'd. I'm not I see another. To say. I see another Fiorentina Istanbul Besiktas here oh, do situation. I just just think of what the climate, the intimidating atmosphere, and oh no, mental. I mean the tie overall. Just I think at time could were be four up against half it. Time. Oh dear. Oh, I hope. I, hope I very much hope I'm wrong. And I've seen that they've not travelled. Their main striker uh, got hurt. During the weekend, See, these these as well. Travel. These are the type of things that you need to capitalise on. There was Rosenberg yeah. without Nelson on the left. Yeah, definitely. Albeit Nipan was there, and he's just he's an absolute superstar. He's all right, isn't he? He's he's the next one that uh, Brightner. Right, oh, he's highly Brightner will get. So, um, but oh, I, I I don't know, man. I hope I'm I wrong. Know. I hope I'm wrong. Listen, I hope it's tight. With the underdogs no, I anyway, I hope we fucking blow them away. I hope we win four 0 and it's easy. With the underdogs anyway, thing. so if, if we get beat, what does it matter? Let's yeah. just let's just let's give a good account of ourselves. Yeah, that's the main. Thing. The result would be a bonus. Just don't get humiliated. Would yeah. be a start. Yeah, definitely. Right. Well, we'll get to that 
next week. So, and as ever, we will now finish with a quiz that I'll be honest. And we're up to Scum D as well. Oh, I who give it a oh, fucking sure fine. Well, I don't care club. what happened. I hate them and all. Check your spam folder. You we're always mates. shit at Dens and all. I don't think I've ever seen us win it. I think I've been <laughs> up to Dens four times. And I can't mind us ever winning. I've been I've been to Dens only twice, and I've not seen us concede a goal. We won three 0 and one 0 I remember on Bob not got a ticket for Sunday, sadly. It was either the twenty third of December. It. I'll just be honest. <laughs> it was either the twenty third of December twenty sixteen or the Oh 24th. my god, the three two with Cathro. The three two with Cathro oh where Liam Smith god. was the reason we lost that fucking game. We're two Dear one up, Lord. loving life, and then Liam Smith. Mad to think we didn't know one another and this podcast didn't even exist back then. I know. And, and yet we could crazy. still recall that so easily. Yeah. That is worrying. That was a Fucking disaster. But anyway, we're on to the quiz. <laughs> that doesn't even matter. So, you, you love a December trip to Dundee. I do! Last season, I know, last season I Christmas Eve at Tannadice. And they're always fucking nightmares. <laughs> like, I should stop doing it. <sighs> well, the quiz is we're here. We've got scheduled on about this it. season, so we're fine. We're fine. I forgot about this quiz. I've had to make changes to it because <laughs> I I said to Adam before we started recording, I had a question about how many goals Devil has scored. I had the wrong number, so thankfully I'd taken it out already. But we've, as ever, got a true or false, multiple choice, two normal ones, and a who am I? I have. I am slightly panicked. I think we've done this. Who am I? So this could oh, be God. interesting. Oh right. no! <laughs> oh, fuck. Well, it is <laughs> again. I'm looking at them, and now suddenly I've got the fear of God that we've already done it. But we'll do the normal okay. quiz. Questions for so we're starting off with a true or false. I'll probably still get it wrong, but yeah, carry probably. on. <laughs> starting off with a true or false. Okay. True or false, Lawrence Shankland has more goals at this point in the season than he did last year. Oh. Oh God. Right. Let's think about this. So he <laughs> scored at Easter Road in the second league game of the season. So up until the second league game of the season. It's basically, yeah. So it includes Zurich. The playoff. Yeah, it includes all that. But in terms oh, of game God. weeks, yes. Right. Okay. Ross County we beat on the opening day last season, and he did not score. It was Alan Forrest and Barry Mackay. So he's got one league goal, which was at Easter Road. He scored in Switzerland. He must have more this season. So, so you're saying it's true? Who did we play in the third league game? <laughs> Ross County Hibs. Oh my God. Who did I see went back from Canada? Was it St Johnston third? No. He would have scored one. Yeah, he's def- he has to have scored more. I'm going true. It is season. true, but it's not as far yeah. away as you think. He's currently four, got three? four, and he had three at this point last yeah. year. It must be St. Johnston then, because he scored it that was. pen to win it. Yeah, it was that's indeed. right. That's right. Good knowledge for me, that. One for one. Woo, right. All right. We're into the multiple choice as well. So, oh, God. When <laughs> so was you the say last... this like I've got a chance. Yeah. <laughs> when was the last time Hart scored from two corners in one game? Was it A... Hearts versus Wraith Rovers, 4-0, January 2021. Was it Hearts versus Wraith Rovers, 4-0, April 2021? Was it Hearts versus Dundee United, 3-2, April 2022? Or Hearts ah. versus St. Johnston, 4-3, August 2015? I know you oh. saw the tweet. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I got this. But did you pay attention to what the was month? It January or April? Because I saw the tweet, bookmarked it straight away and was like, right, that's a quiz question, but I know you would have seen it as well. Oh, God, why and I had the, look at the we have, we have the luck that there was two 4 nils in that season. Oh, my God. The April one. So you're going with Hearts Ruth Rovers, 4-0 April 2021. Yeah, it was January, wasn't it? Incorrect. It was January. Yeah, that's so annoying. That's so annoying. I knew that. I knew it as soon as I picked it. I was like, yeah. I've done that. I'm so that's happy so you got it wrong that way. 
that you oh. saw the tweet and I saw I your wee face. I did, I, I, thought it was, I thought it was in. <laughs> I and then as soon as you said that there was the two four <laughs> nails, I was like, oh, bollocks, what month was it? You oh, were great. so smug there. I saw you get I so wasn't, I genuinely wasn't. I, I was smug you, that I knew, you, you I was smug that I knew the scoreline and the opponent. <laughs> when I read the first Hearts message, Ray, you sat up and you're like, this is it, I'm in. Two for two, here we go. <laughs> oh, right. yeah, that is so annoying. Number three. Pay attention. Against Rosenberg, Stephen Kingsley won the second most amount of ground duels with seven. However, Kami Devlin was the first. How many ground duels did he win? Oh, God. So Kingsley was second with seven. Devlin was first with... And if you get oh. it within within two, I'll give you Oh, that's nice of you. I was gonna go. I was gonna go ten, but is that too high? And I suppose we've got eight or twelve. Yeah, I'll go ten. The answer is thirteen. <laughs> oh fuck off! And as soon as I went, I'll give you two. I was like, oh no, wait, no, that's way too easy. He's gonna get it, but no, he gives the one answer that's just avoided. This it. quiz, man, like why? <laughs> Why? Why would I be looking at ground jewels? See, this is why. You to, uh, this is off of Twitter. This is just tweets I've seen people say that. Whoever Perth tweeted to, that, I, I, you're getting blocked. <laughs> that don't Perth care. The Paisley has liked. So I'm like, no. right, you've seen it. So therefore, there's no excuse. That's, they're work. getting blocked. I don't even know who it is. Get it up you. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thanks for listening, but get it right up you. <laughs> Hearts have been drawn against Greek opposition for the first time since 2006, where we played against AK Athens. But yeah. can you tell me what the score was across the tie and who scored for Hearts, if anyone? So there's two points up for grabs here. If Miko you get... scored. Correct on the goal scorers. And? Did oh. anybody else score? And what was the... I don't, th- I don't think anybody else did. If my memory serves, did we lose 3-1 at Murrayfield? Right. Am I... Is that a yes or no? That's an incorrect answer. But is it? Yes. I can tell you that. That is incorrect. We did not lose three one at Murrayfield. Oh god. Me- did Miko put his one nil up? He did, didn't he? Eh uh, maybe. I can't remember when Miko scored. I'll say I'll say four one over the tie. I don't know. Bloody hell. you so you got the point for Miko. So you've got a point. Uh-huh. You're a goal off. We got beat five oh. one. Deadly. So, yeah, we got beat 2-1 at Murrayfield. And, and then 3-0, 3-0 over there. because remember, we went there in nine men in the really controversial aspect. Was that when Jamie Mole started up front? Yeah, it was. <laughs> what a time to be alive. So, on. there was already five Chris, points. Chris, did up. we score the first goal in that tie and then Maybe? got dicked 5-1? I, can, I can't remember if Miko scored first. Or if I'm going to go school that. Right, you check that. So, there was five points available from that because you got two points for that. So you got th- two out of five. Shocking. That's all right. You still got the who am I, though, that we have potentially done already. I can't remember. AK dominated the first half, but Solius Michaelinus slid home hearts opener in the wow. second after a Roman Bednar drive came back off the post. I really remember it because he grabs the badge. Two late goals from them. It was uh, Capitanos and a better own goal, 89 and 90. The most hearts thing I've ever seen. The most hearts thing fucking ever. Jesus I thought it was Christ. three. Nah, then we just got easily dispatched in green. That was the first game I ever cried at, was leaving Murrayfield. Really? Yeah, little seven-year-old Adam just... I was there bits. because it was the 9th of August, am I right? Or eight. Yeah, I would have been eight. That's right. So it was two days before my birthday. My, my ninth birthday. Dad was yeah. like, you've never had it so good. We've never been anywhere near the Champions League all been alive. It was me, like, just sobbing my eyes out. Right. Oh, dear. Two out of five in the normal quiz. Who am I left? So Dreadful. That was awful. Here we go. I thought you said that was easy. This is what, see, this is this is what I've got to put up with. Like, <laughs> why not just ask normal questions? There, hey, I've had, we've had people say that my quizzes have been getting good recently because they're harder. So that, to be fair, that, that was that was one of your better ones, yeah. and I was just rubbish. I'm just excuse. I'm just trying to overshadow my well, piss poor performance. Let's see and that Raid Rovers out. question is really annoying me. So let's move on. <laughs> so who am I? I had been linked with a move to a Premier League club just a few years before joining Hearts as a free agent. 
I was signed by Hearts in a technicality that meant no compensation fee was paid to my former club. Despite being a striker, I never scored whilst playing in Maroon. I've played in Scotland, Cyprus, and France. Who am I? <laughs> Maybe we've not done this person before, then, if you're not getting any... Scotland, wins. Cyprus, and France? Yeah. Striker and didn't score. It's not David Witteveen again, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I can tell you that. Uh, right, okay. See, when you said about the free agent thing, or yes. like the technicality, I instantly thought of David Abua. But I don't think it is that. Uh, well, I know for a fact it's not David Boer because he played in South Africa as well. Because we got him from Kaiser Chiefs. Because he he had the trial at West Ham. Don't pull that face at me, mate. Don't try and piss me off here. You're doing a great job. Um, <laughs> I do like, that every time I host a quiz. Mate. I know, it really irritates the life out of me, to be quite honest with you. Right, okay. Striker that played in Scotland, Cyprus, and France. Oh my goodness gracious me. I think right off the bat, I'm going to ask what years they played for Hearts. Of course. So I've got his Wikipedia up already. I am prepared. So he played for Hearts in 2017. Oh. Oh, Jesus. Scotland, Cyprus, and France. Yep. 2017. So is that that must yeah that must be Catherine then because Robbie would have left for MK Dons who did he sign well, Bjorn Johnson is still here but he's played in countries other than that oh god you caught me here I'm even leaning towards like an Isma Goncalves but it can't be or is it <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. Uh, this is funny. Wait, never scored in Maroon, did you say? Can I get the clues again, please? I had been linked with a move to a Premier League club just a few years before joining Hearts as a free agent. I was signed by Hearts in a technicality that meant no compensation fee was paid to my former club. Okay. Despite being a striker, I never scored whilst playing in Maroon. Playing in Maroon. I have played in yeah, Scotland, right, okay. Cyprus, and France. Oh. <laughs> you never scored in Maroon. I mean, I was really be... hoping you'd just you'd forget about that and run with David Abua and just <laughs> go for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. So this is somebody that was utter horse. <laughs> <laughs> This that narrows it down to yeah, 800 people. It's going to be any, any heart strike of the past 20 years, Bar Shankly and the boys. Yep. Oh, God. 2017, never scored for hearts. Striker. Oh, I want to lean to the clubs, but I, I don't know. I don't know if that will help me. I'm really, I, I'm struggling to have anybody, like, hit me. <laughs> That's really odd. 2017. <laughs> they play up at Dundee in that dance park to me. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your question? No. Uh, oh, God. Oh, my goodness gracious me. He said, I don't want to go for clubs because oh, we always ask the clubs. But nothing, like, nothing else is coming to me at all. Scotland, Cyprus and France Let's just go for the clubs in order, please, MacIver, because I honestly, I don't know. I'd like nobody, nobody's resonating in the snogging. Nobody's so, hitting me. Nantes, Dieppe, Hearts. Sorry, Dieppe, Stirling Albion, Hearts, Stirling Albion, Doxa, Catapias, Drancy, Stirling Albion. Dylan Bikey or BK or however you say it. It is. I, went, I was like, oh. if he doesn't ask the clubs, we're fine. Because all that is known about Dylan Bikey is two things. One, that we signed him to piss Hibs off. We signed him to piss <laughs> Hibs off, which I couldn't put as a clue. And two, he inexplicably fucking loved Sterling. Jesus. 
They win yeah, by no two goal in Maroon. Two now it games. Makes, now it makes sense. My God. So. Crikey, I forgot all about that boy. The clues to explain. Uh, in August 2013, Bikey signed a two-year contract from Nantes after being subject of interest from English club Everton. Everton? Yep. That was the start of that club's demise. No wonder yep. they're hovering over the relegation zone these days. On the 25th of November 2016, still now being signed up on an amateur contract, during his time at the club, Dylan Bikey scored nine goals in nine games. Who <laughs> just Who raided Sterling Albion. <laughs> Uh, we then signed him, and it actually says Bikey had been training at City Rivals Hibernian ahead of a possible transfer. Um, to explain the second clue, Hart signed Bikey on amateur forms to avoid paying a compensation fee to D- to Jeppy, the or last Dieppe. French to, or Dieppe. Dieppe. I don't care. It's probably Dieppe. Say, the French. Say, Pam, mon ami. The French. It's almost definitely Dieppe because I've just realised HMFC France. C'est pour vous. I've just been. You see, Manthanol. It is actually Dieppe because I just in I just thought there was a J. There's not. It's D, it's D I. It's not D J. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yep. So it's Dieppe. We oui, oui. um, Magnifique. So yeah, we just fucked them at our compensation fee. <laughs> um, and then despite being a striker, he never scored for us. He only played two games, and he's played in Scotland, Cyprus, and France. So there you Jesus. have it, Dylan Bikey. Uh, the the easily forgettable Dylan Bikey stroke BK. Yep. However, okay. 19 9, you're catching me up now. You're two for two no, this I'm season. Really not. I'm really, hey, I'm, really not. I'm none I'm for it. one, and you're two giving for it, two. Giving it, giving it, uh, giving too much a, a mountain to climb here. There's a long way. Unlike carts. Hey, absolutely on. smashed it. Well, if you've enjoyed this cunning wit, please let us know <laughs> by leaving us a review on your podcast platform of choice. It massively helps us out. Also, you can let us know on all the socials at Perth Paisley. If you've enjoyed watching this on YouTube, please have a like, comment, and subscribe. If you want to get in contact with us alongside the socials, you can get us on Paisley at gmail.com. Adam, where can they get you on all the socials? Uh, for more cunning wit from this twit, it's uh, ad- at Adam T. Kendall uh, on all the socials. What about yourself, mate? I am at dmciver22. We'll be back next week to discuss all the fallout from the Pout game, all the fallout from the Dundee game. Any other sign-ins? either incoming or outgoing that will potentially be happening and anything else as well. But until then, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Come on, the house!